Did you hear that? Uh 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 uh. The raven looks like a big crow, and um, <laughs> they are so cool. They have a lot of different sounds up here, and um, that's another thing that's neat. As a, a person who likes birds and has really come to enjoy birding, if you will, coming out and seeing uh, different kinds of birds and listening to their calls and tracking them. There's a really cool app, by the way, I would say. It's called BirdNet. Um, as this is my first video, certainly they are not sponsoring me. But um, BirdNet, it captures the sounds right around you, and then you... you um, hit pause, and then you drag and drop a segment that picks up the call or the song itself. And then to its to the best of its ability, it will tell you what the bird is. And uh, most of the time it's pretty accurate. Which is nice. But what I like to do is I like, I get my, a lot of my uh, ideas from nature itself. You see the way that things naturally age and degrade and die and I like creating things that, that look natural and using as much as possible all natural things for, uh, for projects. I'm not opposed to using composite things and other things like that. I'm not against that, but I'm more of a natural person. And to uh, as much as possible, I will always use... Um, Things that just naturally occur, like, for example, right here, there is a, uh, a branch that's down, it's dead, it's weathered looking, but we could use a part like this or sticks like this to make, um, like, rail fence on a small little um, woodland scene or a woodland uh, um, cottage or what have you and it's so neat to use a natural piece of wood that's weathered like that just amazing or you can take a look let's go in here take a look at this tree bark right here that, oops, has this uh this natural occurring lichen on it i love that and if I was going to make a, a small miniature house, model house or something like that, I would want to capture <clears throat> that bark. And uh, particularly that bark with the lichen on it because it's just, that's the way it naturally grows out here. So we should try and, uh, or I like to recreate that. I think it, it's sad that a lot of people don't have access uh, to woods and wilderness that just goes on and on forever. Um, I love it when my family comes to visit and get to see the um, like the transformation that my uh, nieces and nephews have when they get up here. They get up here, and for that first night, it's like trying to find out what the Wi-Fi password uh, is so that they can go online and play their games or, or whatever. And it breaks my heart to see them and see young kids these days confined, their world being confined to a, a glorified 3x5 card, looking at their phone or tablet and... and and, and not even being aware of the world around them. And I think that they miss, I don't think, I know that they miss so much about the world and, and the beauty that's all around them. I mean, what online game can give you this? Even with high definition graphics, you can't recreate this. Heck, it would pixelate. You can't recreate the smell right now of this woods with the slowly aging, mellowing leaves and 
grasses and everything like that. The sound of crunching these leaves. The sound of wind going through these beautiful autumn touched leaves. You can't recreate that. You've got to be in here. And uh, it does something to you. It just does something to your soul. It, it's calming. It's peaceful. It's therapy. It's, it's like a little bit of heaven, I guess. Oh, look at this. So here I'm walking and you'll notice right there is a big red pine tree. And right across from that, we've got a eastern white pine. And of course, this time of year, they are trying to have tiny little pine trees. And so they're dropping their, their, um, their pine cones. And yeah, it's full of debris and stuff like that, but that can be cleaned up. And, and I love using pine cones as um, well as to represent miniature trees, but they're great for making shingles. Kind of like a natural cedar shake roof on a home. These make great shingles. Fantastic. What I also love are small little trees coming up. And those leaves, so brilliant in red, can be used um, in a number of different ways. Uh, you can dry them, press them flat. I like to weave them in. Well, actually, I'm not going to tell you everything yet. <coughs> that's part of the project that's coming up. But something I like to do is I like to get small, tiny little leaves. Like, um, like this. Look at, here's my hand. And look at how tiny that little oak leaf is. It's fantastic. And so let's say that I am making a, a woodland home. And uh, if I'm using oak tree bark in any uh, aspect of the home, I like to make my front door with, um, with an oak leaf, a matching oak leaf. Or if I'm using birch uh, bark, I would use a little um, birch leaf. And I don't know, it's just kind of a little signature thing that I started doing. Delilah loves it up here. Don't you, girl? Oh, yeah. My little pal, my little companion. You ready to go through the woods? Delilah. Come on. Let's go. I'm going to take a deer path here. Probably it doesn't show up as well on a camera, but <clears throat> it's neat to walk, to walk and see where deer naturally walk through the woods. And they don't always stick to these deer paths, but Generally, they are um, a, um, a pattern animal or a habit animal, and it makes it easier to follow scent to keep on the path, and other deer recognize that and smell that, and they use the same path. I've heard it said that they are a lazy animal. I wouldn't want to use that term, but... I would say that they're just uh, efficient. They like to go in the easiest direction possible, devoid of too many obstacles. And so I enjoy following deer paths because they're scenic and you usually don't have to go through too much rough terrain. 
and all along the while you can get inspired by nature, get calm, hear yourself think and breathe and problems of life just don't see that seem that big anymore. Or they seem manageable or not relevant or not important. I think that's my favorite thing about walking in the woods is any issues or concerns that I have get minimized when you're in the magnitude of this natural beauty. And that's a good thing to have happen. We're bombarded by stress every single day. Bad news. And out here, none of that exists. You get a break from life. And it makes you it makes you want to stay in this more and more and more. So I think a lot of episodes are going to be craft related or sharing uh, neat ideas with you and and doing projects together but then there's also going to be um, segments where I'm just sharing what I see up here in my world with you and uh, I'm thinking down the line actually that I could do Northwoods tours and have groups come up together a couple times a year and uh, do fun things up here, go out in nature, gather uh, material to make projects and, and do them up here and just kind of uh, um, commune together, share ideas and have a chance for people to enjoy and, and submerse themselves in this kind of an environment. I think that'd be cool. Which way are we gonna go, Delilah? We gotta get over this obstacle. I think. Right here. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. Crushed it. You crushed it, man. Good girl. Come on, let's go. 